Part 1. Preface. The Fudanari Assumption. The Fudanari anime porn genre is perhaps more prolific than ever. According to Google Trends, Fudanari steadily rose in search queries from 2004 to 2015, until seeing a sharp decline in January 2016. For the record, I highly suspect this was from Google search moderating adult content as we see similar declines for the terms hentai and bukkake at this time. Regardless, Fudanari still remains at its 2008 to 2010 popularity level in Google searches. It also dominated hentai website Faku's year in review segment for 2019, where the vast majority of US states had Fudanari as their top hentai tag. Writer Makia B describes contemporary Fudanari as a phenomenon popularized in 1990s anime and manga, where Japanese Japanese works would show, quote, essentially cis women who have dicks instead of, or sometimes along with, a vulva. The, quote, cis appearing woman with a penis was, quote, originally referred to as dick girl among Americans, he writes. Not a big surprise if you're familiar with 4chan's D, the hentai slash alternative board, where Fuda was so ubiquitous that the term dick girls with slash D slash was commonly used. That's how I came to love Fudanari myself and how it ultimately inspired me as a trans woman. When it comes to Americans consuming Fuda content, cultural translation becomes strange and complicated. I wrote about this in depth back in 2020 for The Daily Dot. Check out the article for yourself in the description if you want to learn more, as this could honestly be a whole separate video about Fudanari. What I'll say here is that per my article, the Fuda woman isn't really supposed to be a trans woman. Certainly not in Japan, and you could argue this still remains the case in the US. But here's an interesting question. Does Fudanari content fetishize trans women? I don't think so, given trans women aren't part of its cultural context in Japan. However, I do think many Americans who see trans women as, quote, chicks with dicks are often drawn to Fuda porn. And at the same time, many trans women enjoy Fuda. They see it as this recognizable pop culture symbol. You know, stereotypical, sure, absolutely, but at least it provides some kind of mirror to trans women to see themselves. Hey, you know, in our pop culture, look, that's a woman and she's beautiful and she also has a penis, a big, fat, hard cocked penis that people are obsessed over and love and adore. You know, maybe, maybe I could be like that. Maybe I could be that, you know, penetrative, phallic woman, right? So some trans women see that and they try to emulate the Fuda hentai girl or embody it in their own porn, whether as artists, whether as sex workers. You know, yes, there are stereotypical characteristics to the Fudanari girl, characteristics that are related to and seen in mainstream trans porn, but it ends up inspiring a lot of us too. Now let's take a step back. Trans women have been a front page political topic since basically the trans military ban in 2017. Today, there are a wide assortment of right-wing sexual anxieties placed on trans feminine bodies in gender-segregated places, like bathrooms and changing rooms. The trans porn category has ballooned in popularity as trans bodies have become a political battleground, and mainstream trans porn remains highly popular with older adults, a group, you know, less likely to accept trans people, let alone fight for their rights. But now in the US, the tables have turned. It's not that trans women see themselves in Fudanari. It's that Fudanari see themselves in trans women. You know, the Fuda woman now has a readily accessible front page American cultural symbol. The transgender woman with a penis. The transgender woman that every other right wing guy is afraid of. You know, subconsciously, we're beginning to see that connection form and emerge. We're seeing Fuda characters this way. We see cis allies asking if Fuda Nari is fetishizing trans women. We see trans chasers collecting Fuda hentai and then hopping onto Grinder. And yes, we see more and more trans women claiming Fuda aesthetics for their own use. Now, when a Western porn artist creates art where a woman has a penis, that character can be seen as a stand-in for a trans woman with a penis. Subconsciously, she is trans-like or trans-coded in American porn. An American porn artist should take note of this fact. For many trans women, the Fudanari woman has since inspired this trans-coded character that we self-insert ourselves into. And the trans-coded character, in return, inspires and influences the way people think trans women's bodies operate. Basically what I'm saying is Americans have a very unique relationship with Fudanari because Fuda women are in conversation with trans women's bodies. 
they can certainly be considered transcoded in the US, at least in today's day and age. So bear in mind, most geeky and nerdy adult artwork that features women with penises take inspiration from Fudanari, showing women with sometimes like extremely large, I mean, large enough to uh, rip me apart, penises who top. You know, these are women who are tops, who penetrate, who even dominate their partners. Mainstream trans porn, where trans women also top, also have these rock hard cocks, also are penetrative. This mainstream trans porn further reinforces this idea. Fuda porn and the trans porn hub category intersect. So why shouldn't a woman with a penis in a porn game act as this penetrative, pervy woman with a rock hard cock that could split a man open? Now, I really want to be clear here. I don't have a problem with Fudanari. I like Fuda Hentai a lot, actually. Uh, it is, in my opinion, one of the most important things for me when it came to my transition. It showed me that being a woman with a penis could be really attractive. And it showed me that there were a wide range of cultural symbols and sort of images that I could take on as a trans woman. You know, I could be sort of the shy, meek, submissive bottom of a trans woman, or I could be like this domineering, you know, penetrative top as a trans woman. And I could, you know, basically find myself anywhere in between. So I've loved Fuda Hentai for a long time. Also, my VTuber model is technically a Fuda model. Um, I can't show you that. <laughs> YouTube would ban my channel. So please take my word for it. Please take my word for it through the censored image on your screen right now. However, Fuda Nari is an imported Japanese genre that was slowly embraced by American hentai consumers and turned into the default cultural coding for phallic women in adult artwork. Tropes in mainstream trans porn combined with tropes in imported Fuda porn, reinforcing this cocktail of half-truths and misconceptions about the trans body, about how it works, about how trans bodies should work. The end result is a shitload of unrealistic trans and transcoded female characters who dominate, who top their partners, who sport these massive erections with ease, and who shoot thick white ropes of cum like we're prize-winning stallions. And don't get me wrong, I want that hot, sexy food stallion in my bedroom right now. Please deliver her to me. But I don't need her to be every single trans female-like character in porn. Please, for the love of God, you know, 52 inch cocked women stop being everything I see. These women are all over the place in Western pornographic art, both depicted as trans women and alternatively phallic women. And it's time for us to start to unpack what this actually means and how it affects the way that trans women feel represented and how they're understood and portrayed in pornography. Part two, the penetrative trans woman. Trans and trans-like women's genitals in porn art generally act like Funanari women's. That is, trans women's cocks get hard easily, they stay hard, the skin texture remains similar to a cis man's penis, and trans girls ejaculate ropes of white semen. Certainly, trans women who are not on hormones have penises that function this way. And trans women who take erectile dysfunction medication or who moderate their testosterone levels to improve erectile functioning also regularly have and maintain erections. It's not impossible to do. But for the lion's share of trans women with penises, our girl cocks just don't operate this way because of hormone replacement therapy. After some time feminizing and on HRT, trans women with estrogen dominant bodies stop having frequent erections. Most of us can still get hard, but erections tend to diminish relatively quickly. Instead, we're more likely to experience slightly engorged states during arousal, where our penises grow slightly, maybe even maintain some erect attributes, but still remain soft in some shape or form. Reaching a full erection and maintaining it takes considerable and intense arousal, like being stupidly horny. You know, the kind of state that's likely to have someone run to Twitter and tweet, I think I have COVID. <laughs> they think I have COVID. Now, personally, I think there's something really erotic about the flaccid trans girl cock. A languid, limp penis, blood flowing to it, but liminal in that state. It's neither hard nor completely drawn into the body. Instead, drooping over a girl's balls or resting lazily against her pelvis. It's, to me, super sexy. It's beautiful, really, and I've found myself drawn to it again and again, both in, you know, the adult art that does depict it and artwork that is just appreciating the nude trans feminine form. Unfortunately, even queer porn illustrators tend to ignore this part of trans women's sex lives, even the raw sexual appeal that this kind of body can have constantly opting for the hard, erect, penetrative depiction of trans feminine sexual arousal, 
you know, the cis-normative idea of what a penis should do. There are other differences in estrogen-dominant trans women's genitals too, such as penile atrophy from less frequent erections. There's also smaller balls and changes in ejaculate's texture, color, and smell. Unless my hormone levels are unbalanced, my cum is transparent. It's sweet to the taste and sticky with very little smell. So that one Twitter user who thought I had a cute cock and wanted to know what my cum tasted like, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Again, though, these things are rarely represented in adult art about us, save for material from trans feminine creators. Part three, the half-assed trans woman, AKA the cis but not trans woman. One of the biggest issues I see with queer porn illustrators is that they go down the Fudinari light route. They draw a woman with a penis, canonically state she is a trans woman, but the illustrator essentially draws a cis woman and erases the vulva, exchanging it for a penis. Sometimes a relatively large, erect, and penetrative penis, mind you. Now to be clear, cis women's bodies and trans women's bodies aren't as distinctly different as some people assume. But there are certain physical qualities that trans women are more likely to have that, generally speaking, non-trans feminine queer porn illustrators generally avoid representing. For example, many trans women have narrower hips, with curves coming in through fat redistribution and lower body workouts. Without breast augmentation, many, not all, but many, trans women end up with smaller breast sizes in the B cup to C cup range, with some trans women's breasts having a tubular shape over a full round one. For skinny trans women early on hormones, breasts are particularly likely to be budding and pointier. For chubby trans women, breasts may be rounder and supple, with only a slightly pointy effect. Those are my boobies and I love them. Twitter does too, apparently. Look at that thirst trap numbers, baby. Let's fucking go. Nipples often change shape and appearance as well as the tanner stages go on, that is, the stages of breast development. Yet, most non-trans feminine adult artists fail to depict our nipples accurately either. In terms of breast development, trans women's chests take a significant amount of time to reach tanner stage 5 if at all, and different medications can influence how trans women's breasts develop. After all, keep in mind that this is basically second puberty. In other words, trans women have a wide assortment of chests across tanner stages, depending on one's given medical regimen and transition timeline. Yet breasts in queer porn from non-trans illustrators almost always skew toward tanner stage 5. Round, full, supple, with rarely any hint of pointiness, regardless of overall body fat. It's this overrepresentation of the idea of what a breast should look like, what a chest should look like. I think at the very least, it's important for adult artists to study trans women's anatomy and see how trans bodies are likely to look. Certainly, no two trans women look the same, and it's possible to overcorrect. Many trans women have the fuller, rounder, non-pointy breast look, so we shouldn't outright get rid of it either. But even then, study how trans women look with full breasts. Study how trans women look with breast augmentation and breast aug scars, just like trans porn artists study top surgery scars for trans men. There are certain general attributes we are more likely to have as trans women. They need to be studied, yet this representation is generally lacking when non-trans feminine adult artists try to depict trans women's bodies. Lastly, part four, rigid normative ideas of pleasure. Here's a question for you. How do you pleasure a trans woman? I mean, in adult games and in comics, I'm not offering per se. Um, well, okay, so there are uh, basically in adult games, comics, and so on, three main options. Are you ready? Let's play the game of what are the three stupid ways that trans women are always jerked off. Number one, let her fuck one of your holes. Pussy, check. Oral, check. Anus, if you've prepped, check. Number two, let her hump and grind against some part of your body. Boobies, butt, I, I, I'm kind of at a loss for words right now, maybe thighs. You know, that's really the ones that come to mind right away. I'm a simple woman. Or number three, stroke her penis until she ejaculates, preferably in a way very similar to how cis men prefer hand jobs. These are basically the three main ways you will see trans women pleasured in all sorts of illustrated porn, and it is just so limited in understanding and scope. It is cis-normative. It's this idea that basically trans women are these women that have cis men's penises copy and pasted onto their crotches. It's just not the way many trans women primarily pleasure themselves, and it's certainly overrepresented to an extreme extent in porn. Trans women's genitals are very complicated things. Given the nerve network for the penis, perineum, and anus is complexly interconnected, 
Check out Fucking Trans Woman by the late Mira Bellwether for more information on this. It is one of my favorite works of trans feminine sexual education of all time. Some trans women want minimal contact with their genitals and prefer stimulation around the anus or perineum, in the latter's case due to its external proximity to the prostate. Others enjoy genital stimulation but prefer sex toys over fingers and mouths. For example, some trans girls tuck their penis under a blanket or in a pair of panties and stimulate their girl cocks with a magic wand. These sensations can feel far more pleasurable on hormones, given changes to the way orgasm and ejaculation happen. For trans women on hormones in particular, pleasuring the penis itself is a very different and unique experience than what cis men prefer. Estrogen changes the texture and feel of the penis. It also changes how nerves act and respond. For example, when I began HRT, my glands became my glands, my glands. For example, when I began HRT, my glands became far more sensitive to touch, and my frenulum became a necessary place for stimulation and orgasm. When my body was testosterone dominant, overstimulation was rarely an issue. Now, it's very easy for me to feel overwhelmed from too much touch, too much pressure, or too much roughness with my penis. Oh, my squealy spooch! As a result, though, when I use my fingers for masturbation. Because my cock is so much more sensitive, I end up stroking myself like I'm playing with a vulva. This is something I didn't really realize until recently and I've started to think about a lot more. You know, many trans women prefer self-pleasure this way, you know, playing with a soft or like at least slightly engorged cock. Now, I don't really see a lot of porn games, comics, and artwork depict this kind of masturbation, unless it's coming from trans feminine creators in particular. In fact, I really don't see any of this artwork sort of highlighting and celebrating the idea of, again, as I mentioned earlier, the soft penis, the gentle penis, the penis that's not erect. Something that, again, Mira Bellwether really highlighted and wanted to destigmatize in fucking trans women. Generally speaking, I tend to see non-trans feminine queer artists default to the tug and stroke approach. It's like assuming trans women prefer fast hand jobs, vaginal penetration, or just like getting vigorous oral sex. You know, the reality is so much more complex, diverse, and varied in preference, and I just like to see artists depict the variety of sexual acts we prefer. You know, from the stroke like a vulva masturbation style I mentioned, to simply stimulating the perineum over the penis altogether. And of course, stuff that's really still widely not known, like muffing, which features so prominently in fucking trans women. In the end, trans women want adult artwork that represents the way we have sex. This doesn't have to be perfect, nor do we always need porn that's true to life. But tropes, assumptions, and cis-normative stereotypes about our genitals dominate in porn, and it leaves many of us feeling misunderstood and unseen when we go to pleasure ourselves.